If you're watching this, I love you. I have full faith that you can do anything you want to do as long as you don't doubt yourself. Enjoy. They say that the ego uh, grows through identification with anything, thought forms, material forms, anything. And then consciousness, enlightenment, and nirvana is formlessness, identification with nothing. The quote, uh, beauty is only lost if we define it, is just the idea that substance is lost when we compare things because through comparison, there is and isn't, rather than just seeing beauty for what it is, which is ever-present. So that's what I mean when I say define beauty. And the second one is the idea of love is only lost if we refine, which is kind of the idea that, you know, people and relationships are naturally whole, but through our egoic mind, we want to try to refine things and tweak things that we think are better, but really there is no better or worse, there just is. So through the refining, we lose. I say that both those things are kind of this one and the same, but they just sort of apply to different aspects of your life. Like with the defined beauty we're talking about, you know, acceptance of things. And then with the refined love, we're talking about the embrace of things, basically. I don't mean to sound cliche, but if you want to be happy and successful in whatever you do, you really got to stop giving a fuck about what anybody else says, honestly. Do you think I could do these daily videos if I gave a fuck? No. You just got to work and live straight from your heart. And when you think you should do things, you should go all the way with it. What's up? I was thinking about this on my walk. You can never offer your family, your friends, or your peers a more positive, bright alternative to what they're doing if you're doing the same thing as everyone else. Think about that. I was also thinking about this on the walk. When you're starting a small business, you need to focus on what actually brings you revenue. What actually brings you revenue usually isn't results. It's the sale of that. So you be a salesperson for your business and outsource getting results to people you trust morning think about this a lot the only really important trait you need to exhibit to have a healthy life and healthy relationships with other people is transparency transparency and maybe a little bit of honesty because you got to be honest with yourself and others to be transparent just grind it out stacking a couple cords of wood with one of my best friends at his house and we were talking about something people try to alleviate doubt with certifications titles and these achievements but really at the end of the day you have to alleviate doubt from your soul realize that it's imaginary man-made it's part of the mind the maya interesting concept that I'm kind of starting to understand in the day and age we live with the personal branding renaissance going on it's not as much about anymore having a product and figuring out who's gonna buy it it's understanding that you have a following and then understanding what's the best thing to sell your target audiences which is a different game to think that all problems stem from worrying so if you alleviate yourself of worry and alleviate yourself of expectation because expectation is a form of worrying you have an expectation and you're worried you won't make it never have a problem again. Obviously, having fun is a crucial part of life, but I think it's really important to never define what fun is for you or compartmentalize fun things to not fun things. There's beauty, life, and fun in everything. I feel like there's a common misconception people have that others don't want you to be happy. It's not that. Let's break it down to the most basic level. People operate out of fear or love. You see someone you think is happier than you, you get fearful, you never be that happy. But really, operate out of love and try to get high off that. Get as happy as them. Bring it out of your There's two main things I focus on in my life. Emotional intelligence and communication skills. With those two things, the world is yours. I believe that. Over-encompassing of both of those is love and experience. You can't get away from love and experience, so embrace it. Good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you may be. I hope you're having a good day, or I hope you do have one. And think about this. We can only really see ourselves reflected through our relationships with others, so pay special attention today and try to understand what those interactions are telling you about yourself. We live in a fast-paced world. Sometimes we forget that it's totally acceptable to take five seconds for yourself just to take some deep breaths, say thank you, I love you for the amazing experience and opportunity we have to be here. Under this one a little bit, I know a lot of people that think that their dreams are unrealistic or unobtainable. Try putting 30 minutes a day into pursuing your dreams and then spend the other 23 hours doing whatever you think you have to do and I guarantee you within five years of doing that, you'll have achieved your dreams and have completely new ones. And you know, one of our greatest assets is time. If you don't put in 30 today because it's just not your day, you're not feeling up to it, you couldn't push yourself to do it, that's fine. Put in 45 tomorrow. You have infinite potential and no one's judging you except for yourself. So just embrace it. So Good morning. just want to say thank you. I love you and hope you uh, are able to embrace and enjoy your day because the only person that's going to stop you from doing that is yourself. you got beautiful trees out here. It's fall time in Washington. I love it. I've been having a nice 
quiet, contemplative day, walk around town. I was talking to this guy earlier about wealth. He said wealth is the ability to acquire experiences that bring you joy. And if you find joy outside of the material world, you can always be wealthy. Some of you might be like, Jay, I don't give a shit how you feel. That's fine. I was just saying it for the purpose of like, things aren't permanent. Things change every second. And you have to be disciplined respectfully within your practices second to second to keep the bliss. I love the idea that we all look at the same things, but we choose to see differently. What I mean by that is you can find negatives and find flaws and things, or you can find positives and find empowerment through just about anything, and empower others through just about anything too. A little pro tip. Seeds and vegetables carry the defense mechanism to keep them alive, so de-seed them and you're good to go. Got the trippy vibes in here, I love it. I'm not saying that as someone who's endorsing psychedelics, but if you're someone who believes that the baseline consciousness right now that's okay with cutting down the rainforest so we can grow soybeans, so we can feed cows, so we can eat steak, is right or normal, that's fucked up. I believe the most profound uh, realizations come through altering your state of consciousness, of realizing states of interconnectedness between you and the planet and people, and then being able to bring those realizations out of your trip into baseline. I think it's so important. Good evening. Just wanted to say, I love you. I believe in you more than anybody else, besides hopefully yourself. Do whatever you want, because we got you. I got you. It's all love, baby. Have fun. Enjoy. Yo, sending you love, like always. Hope you guys find the chance to do something nice for someone today or go out of your way just to be a good person because I think the world needs more good people, less talkers, more doers. Just be nice, enjoy it. Yo, here's a fun idea I was playing with today. So the false celebrity or the actor allows the negative spirit of the crowd to become their master. So think about that in regards to Instagram and social media and think about how um, you'll become a fool Last and most difficult of all, if you surround yourself with people who don't allow you to be your authentic self, they say you're faking it, you're posing, whatever, fuck those people. With compassion, those people have settled for complacency and they're afraid of your individuality because what does that mean for them? this conclusion lately that conflict stems from ideological warfare that happens when two people have two differing ideas of how one can successfully navigate through life and excel to the top of the dominance hierarchy that they want to excel to the top to, but they feel threatened by the other persons because it might make their own fallacious. I've said this a lot, but I'll say it again because I'm thinking about it. I think kids are the best mirrors. I think if kids don't like you, there's definitely something inherently wrong with the framework you've constructed to live your life through. What's wrong with it? I don't know. That's not for me to know. That's for you to find out. But I think you should heed the warning. I had a piece of advice from my grandpa I'll extend to you a couple years ago. He said, Jay, you know what they say about beautiful people. They are where you find them. He was talking about beautiful women, but I think that applies to everybody. Don't ever be afraid to go out to new places and don't ever think where you're at is stagnant because beautiful people are where you find them. The two oldest novels I've read were by Charles Dickens and Dostoevsky, and the reason I think I like them so much is they point out specific character traits in their characters that you can resonate with, and then they kind of rip them apart in like the most humorous ways and satirical ways. It's like interestingly introspective and fun. Before we're on the subject of the day, I think it's important to mention that all of us use drugs and alcohol and entertainment to sequester our own curiosity because we get overwhelmed by it. But curiosity is where everything comes from. The unknown, the curious, is where potential lies. So embrace it. Don't be scared of it. More than everyone, feeling good. Hope everyone's thriving. There's this quote I live by that says, What you want most is where you least want to look. So today, test yourself. Go where you don't want to go. See what you find. Test your capabilities. Go outside where you think your limitations are last piece on the cake here so you go through the struggle and the chaos of acknowledging your own inadequacies and trying to evolve and become a better person and then you come out with something you feel a little bit better than you did before you feel a little bit less confused a little bit more organized and then you go through it all again that's the hero's journey <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I heard this quote today, I think it's funny. At 20 years old, you're empowered because you think everyone's thinking about you. At 40, you feel empowered because everyone's thinking about you, but you don't need to care anymore. And at 60, you feel empowered because you realize no one was thinking about you the whole goddamn time. 
Now under the presupposition that you're acknowledging how important it is to be selfless, healthy, and holistic in the metagame of life, it's also important to acknowledge the fact that everyone is taking their life and their identity so seriously that to be extraordinary you must take life and your identity way less seriously and realize it's just a game. Touch on this. It's simple, but it's important. You can't let other people's opinions fill your mind and stop you from doing what you want to do. It's important to know how you're showing up in the world, but usually people's opinions are just projections of their own self consciousness anyway. So just enjoy yourself. You only got one chance being you, so live it up. Don't get me wrong, I'm all about like Eckhart Tolle, I've read that stuff and I love it, but when you get so wrapped up in like trying to become everything in a finite reality and being infinite and present, with the opportunity to become everything, a lot of people become nothing without responsibility. So that's why I think, think that you start that journey of responsibility with the smallest of things, like taking responsibility for your health, taking responsibility for your thoughts, taking responsibility for how you treat other people, for the amount of kindness you show, for how much you give, for how grateful you are, and then it'll just all compound. I heard one of the most powerful things today. Someone said to me, life is not a game, but a set of games. And the only rule is never sacrifice victory across the set of games for victory in one specific game. If you've ever done any exact dance, I'd recommend just trying to find some where you can because it's a really fun, interesting experience, especially if you do it for a while. You start like working through trauma through your body which is really interesting thing and it just just it's a therapeutic fun thing hey guys i want to touch on something i think it's lost in translation a lot the reason why i advocate for being red and being strong and being spiritually centered and fucking thinking critically is so you can be someone that people can depend on especially you so you can depend on yourself because there's going to be stressful things that happen in your life. There's going to be chaos. And if there hasn't been yet, good for you, but it's going to happen. And when those situations happen, most people are completely overwhelmed and they break down and they look for someone else to give them advice or someone else to take care of them or, you know, they're just overwhelmed by emotion. And the way that we prevent that is by preparing. And the way that you pre prepare is being physically strong so you can move that to there or being mentally acute so you can analyze what's going on and not be overcome by emotion but you can be logical there's nothing wrong with emotion but it's not going to help you when the fucking wolf's coming after you and like being spiritually centered so when things happen in your life and when you see new things that completely rock your value system and what you've been using to integrate with the world you at least have a boat in the sea of chaos and from a psychological perspective the way that people develop mental illnesses is being touched by some kind of malevolence Malevolence is evil, so like you get betrayed by someone and you just don't understand how that person could betray you and you thought that they were someone else and all those kind of... That really fucks people up and like the way to be... The way to adapt to that kind of stuff is to have a solid foundation and be able to embrace the chaos of life with the fear that it brings and not being overwhelmed by the fear because life is fucking intense and scary, but... If you let that stop you, then you're going to look back and you're going to wish that you would have fucking jumped in anyway. For this, there's no better gift you can give yourself rather than a healthy body, healthy mind, healthy soul. You can wake up, not have a goddamn question on your mind. You can feel capable of anything the day might throw at you. No better feeling. A lot of negative feedback yesterday about the pre-workout thing. Chill out. All I was trying to state was that you shouldn't let external forces determine how strong clear and peaceful you're going to be. If it doesn't come from inside, it's not sustainable. At least that's what I think. At the end of the day, the only person who can give your gifts is you, and that's the biggest reason why I make these videos, to inspire you not to worry about how people are going to receive your gifts, if they're going to enjoy them, if they're going to open them, but to just create the reality you think is best by fearlessly influencing it. Don't go Hitler on us. If you don't know what your gifts are, then my advice to you is do all the things that you know you should, but you're not motivated enough to, like go to the gym, do that painting, read the book, start the business, ask that girl out, make new friends, all those things. Once you start doing all those things, then your gifts will just start revealing themselves to you. Quit hiding from them. You know, any of those things, since those are in your mind, they are being manif the clues and the answers are being manifested in reality through the synchronicities. And if you're paying attention to the synchronicities and you're aware and you trust in the fact that they're being presented to you for a reason, then they answer those questions. And then you can create new questions and you the process just keeps going like that. And that's so empowering. It's so empowering.
if you want to be a leader, it's more about a devotion to a set of ethics or, you know, way of living. It's not necessarily the positions that you put yourself in, but it's how you operate in the positions that you find yourself in, regardless of if you put yourself there or not, if that makes sense. And that's really empowering for me because I've tried to wonder why I never felt like I was living up to my ideas of being a capable individual because I was attributing that to, you know, being an entrepreneur and making lots of money, but you can also do that in the way of being a leader, you know, a real leader. So think about that. I think it's a really interesting idea.